United States and the UK had the right to invade Afghanistan. What gives any political entity, a country, a right to exist in a sense as a political entity? And I'd say what gives it is the extent to which it defends the rights of its citizens. That is, a, a government is only legitimate to the extent that it protects the sovereignty of its individuals. Governments don't have, countries don't have sovereignty. Only individuals have sovereignty. You own your own life. To the extent that you grant your government legitimacy, is to the extent it's legitimate. If, if, if it's any dictatorship in my view, it's illegitimate. Any country that systematically violates the rights of its citizen, what does it mean to say Saddam Hussein has sovereignty over you all? I mean, that's bizarre. He is a murderous thug who killed his own people in mass, who didn't have, didn't allow individual rights in any respect in anybody, anybody in his country yet, he has sovereignty over you. Walk. No, he's completely legitimate. Anybody could have invaded and got rid of him, and it would be completely legitimate. Now, the question is, should you invade to get rid of Saddam? That, in my view, is completely a question of, you know, your own um, interests. That is, was it in America's self-interest to invade you all? In my view, the answer ultimately is no. Was it in America's self-interest to invade Afghanistan? Probably, but not the way they did it. Um, so it really is a question of self-defense. And so what is its self-interest? Ultimately, boils down to this. Is it crucial for American self-defense to invade Iraq? If, it is, if the answer is yes, then you invade it. If the answer is no, then you don't invade it. The, the legitimacy, the, the, the sovereignty of Iraq is irrelevant to the question. Now, if you're talking about France, then there is a question of sovereignty, because it is a legitimate government. You know, it is rights respecting, at least to an extent, you know, just as Britain is, and just as America is, they're all mixed, right? They're not pure, but they're all mixed. But look, I can see by your face, but you disagree with me. If you think, if you think that France, or take the UK, that the UK or France, on the same scale of rights violation as Iraq is, then you're completely detached from reality. Why is the line well, the line, in my view, the line is the, the four characteristics of a, of a state. I think that, let me see if I can remember all four. But the four characteristics of a state that is illegitimate completely, that is basically a dictatorship of totalitarianism. One party rule. Um, whether, you know, uh, whether you have, the most important one in my view is whether you have censorship or not, freedom of speech to the extent to which it is applied. Um, whether you have any kind of any kind of elected government, you know, okay, so those three. But the key is, in my view, of some kind of one-party rule which denies any kind of election and, and uh, freedom of speech. As long as you have freedom of speech in a country, there's some freedom left in that country. There's some way to use reason and thought and, and argument and discussion in order to change the world in which you live. When freedom of speech is gone, you're basically living in a dictatorship in which your only means of dealing with change is through violence, through revolution, bringing up, taking arms, and revolting against the government. So a country that rejects all notions of speech, which clearly Iraq did, which clearly France and Britain and America don't, that's freedom of speech. I'm, I'm here, right? I'm not a very popular guy. I was just in Israel. There's freedom of speech in Israel. I could speak in France. I've spoken in most of Europe. You know, there's basically freedom of speech in the West and in much of Asia. You know, China is an interesting mixed case. There's clearly less freedom of speech in China. There's one party rule in China. You know, China's not a. You know, China's probably the one, the most borderline you're going to get. But clearly, Europe, the U.S., Japan, the Koreas are fundamentally. Free countries, they're not as free as we'd like, but they're fundamentally free. And clearly, North Korea, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and I can think of a bunch of others, are not free in a fundamental sense. There's a, 
there's a difference between the two. And all you'd have to do is go visit those places. Not for very long. And you would notice that there is a stark, stark difference. Now, is the US and England where we want them to be? No, absolutely not. They're nowhere near as free as they should be. But they are much freer than these guys, and therefore much more, they're much more moral, and much more, and therefore legitimate regimes versus these that are not legitimate regimes. The North Korean regime is not a legitimate regime. Somebody wants to invade them and get rid of the guy, all the power to you. I wouldn't do it because my life's not worth risking for the sake of the North Koreans. But you know, if you want to do it, that's your business. 